everyone so today's video is a q a i told myself i'm going to get back on track and start doing these q a's monthly so these questions are from the previous four or five videos and my niece did get them together for me i skimmed over some of them so i kind of know what's coming but um, i'm all set here i have my tea it's kind of chilly in here so i have tea in my usual water mug and i have a heater going by my feet and I have a grapefruit and mint candle burning, and I'm all set here in my little she shed, uh, ready to answer some of your questions. I always feel like this is kind of a good way to kind of connect with you guys, and I always feel bad that I don't get to all of the questions, so if I don't answer your question, it's not that it wasn't important. Uh, we just sorted through and picked out you know, a handful from each video, so let's get right to it. Uh, the first questions are from the spring mantle decorating video, and the first one here is Muriel. Not sure am I pronouncing that correctly. Uh, I have a question. When you make changes to your home, seasonal or just because, how do your boys and men react? Do they notice? Do they comment? I'm so curious. Um, I should just ask them. I guess I should just go around and ask them point blank, see what they say. But just from my own like perception, what I what I think is sometimes I can't really tell. Uh, you know, sometimes I'll ask them like, "Did you notice that I redid this?" And then they'll fuss about it or comment. But uh, usually they don't really say something first, so I always wonder, you know, would they really see it if I didn't ask them sometimes? But they do every now and then, especially if I do something major, they'll uh, comment on it. And I do get their opinions on things every now and then. I'm not sure if something looks right, and then I'll ask them, and I think they have a pretty good eye, especially the boys, to kind of tell me what looks right or, you know, what I could change around. So it's always handy to get a second opinion now and then. Uh, Lynn Castile Butler says, I love the cottages and excited to see them decorated. I did do a cottage update in this video too. Uh, will, will you be going with the white theme? Uh, yes, I probably will. You guessed it. I mean, not everything in the whole cottage is going to be white, but uh, when I started my Etsy shop in 2017 and called it White Cottage Company, little did I know that eventually we would actually have cottages, but I think now it's so fitting. Um, you know, I definitely want to stick with that white theme and not just because of the name but because I love it it's me like I want to put my brand in there and things that I love and I'm having so much fun right now guys picking things out I mean it's just crazy sometimes I can't believe it's happening and I'll try to do a cottage update soon again but they're looking different than what the last time you saw them they actually have siding on now uh, we need to paint the siding it's a wooden siding uh, so it needs to be painted and the color isn't right at this point, but just beautiful with the windows in there. And uh, we've been so impressed with JDM Structures. They're the company that's building them for us, like the outside part. And we'll be doing the inside, but they have done an amazing job. Uh, could not be happier. And RGV Texas says, could you post the link to your sister's Etsy shop, please? I felt so bad. I actually forgot to put her link in the description box. I had told you guys I would, and make sure to check her out. I'll put it in this description box, but she has uh, an Etsy shop and then an Instagram where she shares a lot of her uh, gardening journey on. And I'm sure you guys, if you're gardeners, you will be impressed. Like, she's so good with, I often ask her for advice with, I always say she's like a plant doctor. So I'll make sure to put her links in the description box. I promise this time I'll do it. Rebecca Oren is asking if Amish are building the cottages. Um, I'd say some of each. Uh, JDM is getting you know the crews to do the exterior work. So sometimes we'll come out there and there's you know some Amish guys there and there's also some that aren't. Um, as a whole around here, you're gonna find some good work crews. Like this area is known for their work ethic and I'm really proud of that. Like I love that part about living here. Uh, you're pretty much guaranteed if you hire someone to do something it's going to be done right and fast i feel like i'm fading out already i better adjust my brightness and i think i'll go ahead and turn my heater off i feel the sun is starting to warm things up in here uh, the next question here is Mary Swartz asking, do you quilt? Um, actually, I do. I learned at home as a young girl. Mom taught me how to quilt. Uh, she's actually an expert, like a pro quilter. Uh, she used to do it for like a side income. And I always hated it, to be honest. It's so tedious to stitch along those lines. Um, I know I used to go to quiltings. You know, when I was Amish, we had like church quiltings. I'm not sure do they still do that or not. But I tried to go uh, just you know, for the fellowship of nothing else, but I definitely didn't really enjoy it, uh, the, the quilting part. But I do realize and kind of appreciate that there's something special about a quilt that is actually hand quilted. 
And the bottom comment from that video is Cass77788 saying, I like everything but the rabbit pillow. Don't do rabbits, especially for Easter. It's not about the bunny. It's about the lamb and the resurrection. So I do crosses, empty tomb, etc. I would love to see you do some spiritual DIYs for Easter and not bunnies, eggs, or chicks. Could you please do that? Devote one video to only spiritual Easter. I will keep that in mind. I agree that is really important. It is what Easter is about. I love Easter. It's probably my favorite holiday. Um, it's not, I mean, it can be kind of sad too, you know, to think what Jesus went through, but it's, uh, it's such a special holiday to me. I mean, I enjoy Christmas too, but there's something about Easter. I just, yeah, it's one of my favorites. Um, I do love decorating, so naturally I'm going to be decorating for Easter, as in probably using bunnies and eggs and all that too, but I do know the importance of Easter, and I definitely should try to do a video on more of a spiritual Easter video. I like that idea. I have a few questions from the Q&A that I did recently. Uh, Earthy Artist says, Mary, have you ever considered doing a Q&A with your husband? Uh, we've talked about it, and at this point, probably not. It's just not really his thing, and I get it. Like, it's not even really my thing, to be honest. Like, I, I would much rather be doing something in my videos and like teaching someone something or trying to than just doing a talking one like this. It's always hard for me to even edit these, but I, I would never force John to, to do this if he wasn't totally on board, but who knows, maybe someday. Uh, Paula Hawes says, how did you keep your ferns over winter? I guess I should explain that more. I had them in the shop, like the wood shop, uh, probably one of the dustiest place, places here on our property. I think I had mentioned that in the video, but they didn't seem to mind that. And just once in a while, not even weekly, I would water them. I mean, I kept them fairly dry, like I didn't want them to get you know too wet, uh, just enough that they survived, I guess. Um, honestly, when I put them in there, I didn't think they would survive because I just never really had luck with that. And the temperature in there would be fairly cold. Like it's not, it probably is an average of maybe 65. So I don't know that did they kind of like that too. I do have a third fern that I'm trying to keep over winter. It's actually upstairs under the skylight. Um, it seems to be doing okay, I think. Uh, it's not the best looking, but I think it's still living. So hopefully I'll be able to move that out on the porch then once I once the weather is, you know, permits, uh, but they are really messy. Like I was really happy to have those ferns out in the wood shop, the, the, the two that I used in the, the bassinet. I was really glad to have those out there because they do create quite the mess. Uh, Anne Lefevre says, did you start your YouTube channel just to see if you could make money on it or did you create it as a hobby? Same with your Etsy shop. Was it only to sell items for money? Life becomes too busy when you do things only for money, but I know everyone needs to make money. Exactly. Um, I started my channel just wanting to share my projects. That was my, you know, I've always done, I didn't just then start repainting furniture when I started my channel. I've been doing that ever since, you know, I was probably before I was married. Like it's always been a thing in my life and I never really had the means to, you know, share it. Not that I feel like I know everything and everyone has to know exactly what I'm doing and do it my way or whatever, but just I love that we have a platform, like I get so many ideas from other YouTube videos and I love that we have this platform to share ideas on and that's kind of why I started it and I didn't think that I'd ever be able to make money on it. And at that time, of course, I viewed the ads that always would come on with, you know, watching YouTube videos. I kind of grumbled about those, but I don't anymore because that is definitely what gets YouTubers paid is watching those ads. Um, I just look at it differently, but I totally understand if not everyone looks at it that way. I know they can be annoying, but um, it's definitely, there is a lot of time involved in creating videos. Even though I love it, I do, like, it's, it's nice to be compensated for time, definitely. And then the Etsy shop, I've always loved to make things and sell. Like, I would do this in, like, the vintage fair every year. It would just my highlight of the year to just spend a whole year making things and then selling it and selling out in the vintage fair. That was always a big highlight for me. And then with having an Etsy shop, it was kind of a steady, like, I could do it all the time, just create little items and then... Of course, the time came when I wasn't able to create them all myself. I needed help with, uh, you know, as long as I, I always try to come up with the initial design, of course, and then I get people to help me continue with it. But uh, it's so much fun. Uh, it is fun to make money doing things that you like to do. So I guess it's some of both there. And then the bottom comment from that Q&A video is Herb Digger saying, you're talking way too much. I feel that way too sometimes, but how do you film a Q&A without talking, right? The next questions are from the shed repainting video. 
Uh, the first one here is Deb asking, how do you keep from not getting poison ivy? Well, actually I do get it sometimes and I think just cleaning up back here, I'm trying to think, I think that next week I did end up with a little bit of poison ivy on my ankles somehow. So it can happen during the winter too. But yeah, I do get that sometimes. I don't get it like some people do. I know some people end up going to the doctor. I've never had to do that, but I do deal with it during the summer some. Angelina Cole says, this is off topic from the video, but I'm curious, do you still have that little bird that comes to your window when it wants to be fed? You know what? I think I saw her the other day. It's a mockingbird in case some of you don't know, but last uh, summer or spring, uh, she used to come to the window when she wanted to be fed. Like she'd uh, hop along the railing trying to get my attention and then I'd look and sure enough the suet would be gone on my little feeder there on the railing and as soon as I went out and put a glob of suet out there she'd happily hop over and start eating but I'm pretty sure I saw her the other day and when she came to the feeder there was suet there so she didn't really you know try to get my attention or anything but I know last year it was a little bit later in the spring season when I'd see her uh, you know on a regular basis so I'll try to keep you guys updated if she, if she does that again this year but really cute. Uh, Mama Bear Life says, I'm curious how long did this take you to do? Uh, painting the shed, I would say a day. I know, I'm trying to think if I had kind of split it into two days maybe, but I know if I would have had a whole day, I could have done it in a day, I think. Uh, Robert Pina 99 says, it sounds like the Wild West out there. Who or what is being shot at? Uh, yeah, I had been doing like a voiceover talking on the camera and my son, you know, boys being boys, I think he shot off a few firecrackers. It sounded more like firecrackers, but trust me, we do have gunshots around here too. It does get used a lot. Paint. We aren't the Wild West, but we just have boys in the family. The bottom comment here is Polly Tobek saying it should put windows in the roof. We actually have clear siding here. It's not windows, but it de definitely lets some light in uh, to have that clear uh, like siding stuff. I'm not sure what you call it, but that's in the roof here. And I know windows always look pretty, but they can be a hassle like with leaks and stuff. So we didn't, we opted to go with the, the siding. I'm trying to do my video questions here in order. And I see I skipped the thrifting challenge video. That one was actually before the, the shed painting. So I'll just hop to that one right now. And the first question is, uh, Eastern Washington resident saying, you never disappoint. I just love how that chair turned out. Well, thank you. I'm uh, just wondering what stain color was used on the drawer top. I drew a blank just now. I'm not even sure what I did in that video. So I had to check back and see what I did with a, she's talking about a little cabinet with the three, the three drawer cabinet. I put a new wooden top on there. I believe it's aged oak stain. It's a color by Mint Wax. And often I'll go for that color or chestnut. Those two are really nice, warm, medium color stains. I really like those right now. Uh, Karen Reed says, when will your cottages be available? Um, at this point, we're not quite sure. I mean, we had goals of, you know, what if we could get these up and running by the end of May, which that's a long shot. I don't think that's gonna happen. So I'm thinking sometime this summer. Um, again, I'll keep you guys updated on that. Uh, BC Worth asks, if you sit on the chair fairly often, will the paint crack and flake off, do you think? I had painted a vinyl chair. And no, I think that paint is on there to stay. Like it, it seems to be still soft. Like it's not, it didn't really stiffen things up uh, when, when I put the paint on. And at the same time, when we sit on it, we're not sticking to it or anything. It's just right. Like I'm really impressed with how that turned out. I would definitely do that again, like paint a vinyl chair. It's definitely holding out so far. Uh, Brian and Tammy Olson says, how do you keep the contact paper from rolling up on the edges? I can't really remember having ever having issues with that. It probably depends on what surface you're sticking it to. Like if you're, and try to make sure, of course, your surface is clean, because I think dirt could maybe cause that to not stick properly. But uh, if it were to roll up, I would probably just glue it down to kind of keep it in place. But so far, I haven't really had that issue. Uh, French Cottage Style says, do you use a tripod when shopping? Absolutely not. I try to be very discreet when I am out in the public and filming. In fact, I'll use my phone often for the most part. Um, I'm just not comfortable with filming in front of people. I feel disrespectful. I don't know, is it a thing with growing up? You know, I was a little Amish girl and that was probably one of the most annoying things. I realized people didn't do it to be annoying, but uh, was when people, you know, stopped right in front of you and just took pictures of you. It was like you were some sort of animal or something. And, you know, often when we were right driving down the road in our buggy, sometimes an open buggy, you know, people would stop and just take pictures of us. And uh, it probably stems some from that, that I'm just not comfortable with doing that. And I think anybody, like your normal person, probably doesn't really appreciate if somebody 
is, you know, maybe walking through a public space and just filming everything. You kind of wonder, you know, where are you going to end up on? Uh, so I definitely would not use a tripod when I'm out in public, you know, in a like a store setting anyway. Uh, Marcella Stacy says, that's terrible painting a leather chair. It's just not right. This is the bottom comment. Um, I don't think that was leather to start out with. I, I'd say it was more a vinyl. And even if it was leather and I didn't like the color, I would probably paint it. Sorry. <laughs> paint to me is often just the solution for just making things look better. I have a few questions from the product release video. The first one here is Barbara Darling asking, how much time does it take for you to prepare for your vlog? Do you plan a week for the next week? Uh, where do you get your ideas? What gets your creative juices flowing? All very good questions here. But first of all, the how much time it takes to make a video. Um, it depends on the video. A lot of people ask that. Sometimes I'll spend a couple days and sometimes a half a day, usually a couple days, I'd say. Um, it's just, it takes a lot of time or it takes me a lot of time. Maybe I'm just slow, I don't know, but we are actually trying something new with editing. I'm so excited about it and praying it'll work out, but my youngest son, Ephraim, is kind of interested in helping with editing. Um, I can't believe it. Even as I'm filming here, he's in there editing next week's video. Like, how awesome is that? I've always done everything on my own and it's, you know, it's doable. I love to do it. I'm not complaining, but it's just, it takes a lot of time and that would really free me up if he'd be able to do that. And he does want to get a summer job. And right now, even after school, he's able to work some too. So we're trying to get him to get the feel of it and see if this is something he'd want to do this summer. Um, I think it would be awesome, so I'll keep praying it'll work out, but uh, John actually sat down with me the other day and he said, we, you're too busy, like you can't just go on like this with no, you know, free time, and um, I think it probably bothers him more than it does me. I, you know, I realize I have too many things going on right now, but um, it's all things that I really enjoy doing, and it's so hard for me to think of, you know, giving something up, but I want to try to keep my priorities straight here, but uh, again, just, yeah, enjoying all of it, but yeah, it's almost too busy, and it's so important to have a schedule, which that is your next question. Do you plan a week for the next week? The best way is to do that, like to be a whole week at least ahead, and this winter I had a point where I was still editing the video, the Wednesday video, like on a Tuesday. I was still doing some editing, and we have really horrible internet here, and I have to allow for a long span of uploading time, and uh, that just gets really crazy around here if I I just can't do that. I have to be a week ahead instead of the day before. I actually watched a really motivating video recently. It was Farmhouse on Boone. I watched Lisa all the time and she had a video where she shared kind of her, uh, how she makes her schedule and she has people helping her like with what she does, you know, the editing and everything. And uh, she just had this neat system where she uh, showed how, you know, how she goes about to keep a, be organized, I guess, basically. Uh, so make sure to check that out if you're looking for some new ideas. But I was really inspired by that. And in fact, that day I actually downloaded the Trello app, I think is what it's called. And that was as far as I came with that. I haven't even done anything on it, but it's on my phone. So I guess that's step one. So far, I just have my ideas kind of in my head. Like I know for the next couple weeks what I'm going to be filming or what my videos are going to be about. But I think it'd be nice to actually see it on paper or on an app or I need to be more organized with that. Uh, what gets your creative juices flowing or where do you get your ideas? Um, I always am thinking of new things to do, of course, um, and then Pinterest is probably my main inspiration. I love going on Pinterest and whatever I'm in the mood for, like right now I'm really do researching English gardens, like I love that style of gardening, so often I'll just put that in and I'll just dream away as I <laughs> scroll through the, the pages of Pinterest. Uh, Julie Hooser says, I did miss out on the fresh cut grass scent last summer. She's talking about candles here. Will that be coming back? I'm actually glad to, I'm happy to know this. Like I love getting feedback from you guys. Like what scents would you like to see again? We did run a special during July 4th, I think, when we had the fresh cut grass. And it's not everybody's scent or idea of a candle, but I loved it because I love the smell of fresh cut grass. And I definitely would keep that in mind because I thought about doing another uh, July 4th one maybe or just a summer candle. I'll have to talk to Amy about that, but I uh, will keep that in mind. Uh, the bottom comment from that video is Vicki Harrison saying, I wish you would tell us upfront when the video is going to be a commercial. Thank you. 
You know, when I read that comment a bit ago when I was going over these, I thought, did I forget to do that? Because I always try to do that. Like, I even feel bad putting out videos where I do nothing but talk about new products and new things we have going on. But I did check that out, and this is what I said in the beginning. Hey guys, so today's video is not my usual makeover decorating type of video. I'm just sticking this one in between my usual Wednesday videos, and I just want to share with you some new products we have for the Etsy shop. Just thought I'd warn you in case you're not looking for anything new. This might be kind of boring, but many of you have been So that made me feel better. I did not forget to mention that, that it would be like a commercial just talking about new products. And I always like to stick those videos in between the regular Wednesday ones, so I'm not taking away from that. Uh, the next questions are the antiquing video. It's where uh, my sister and I had gone just one forenoon. We had visited two antique malls here in the area. Uh, Garden Mama says, Hi Mary, my daughter and I watch one of your videos every night before her bedtime. Aw, that's sweet. She is seven and always gets inspired by your trash to treasure videos. She wanted to ask you if you enjoyed being Amish when you were a little girl. Well, first of all, thanks for this. This warms my heart. Like, I can't believe a seven-year-old would be interested in my videos, but... I definitely want to get a trash to treasure up again soon. I haven't done that recently, but this kind of reminds me. But as far as answering your questions about being a little Amish girl, I had a wonderful life, wonderful memories. Uh, my sister and I are both really nostalgic. You know, it was just the two of us growing up, and we will sometimes get together and just talk about uh, the good old days. You know, we'll go through Pinterest and try to find things that will trigger some memories. And we enjoyed our childhood. I mean, looking back now, I think, you know, what we didn't know didn't harm us. Like, we didn't know we were kind of maybe deprived in some areas, if you even call it that. Like, we didn't have all the modern conveniences and we had to, you know, really work hard to sometimes, um, you know, get things done because of not having, you know, modern conveniences. And But I think that was actually good for us. I don't think there was anything wrong with that. Uh, but at the same time, it's also awesome to take advantage of new inventions that come out and if it makes your life easier. Uh, but yeah, we definitely had a good childhood, so I enjoyed being Amish when I was a little girl. You know, things then changed as we got older and, you know, sometimes you just, some things just don't work for you. Even if it works for someone else, you need to make changes in your life and I guess that's kind of what happened to us then. Eileen says, I know you went to the Walnut Creek Antique Mall, but what was the other place you went? That was something I kind of forgot to mention. I know I had probably mentioned it in my video that I'll put it down below in the description box, like where, you know, the two malls were at that we went. Uh, we went to the the Berlin, now I can't even think of the name. I know I flashed it on the, the screen for you guys to see. Um, I'm so blank at what it's actually called. I'll try to put it on the screen. Uh, along with the address in case you want to visit, but there's tons of good antique malls in the area. I can't really think that one is better than the other, but uh, that one was right on the corner by the light there in Berlin. Uh, Carol Green says, I just recently purchased some drop cloth fabric from Sherwin-Williams paint store. It's a darker off-white. Where did you get yours to be lighter? I always get my drop cloth at Walmart. Um, I feel it is lighter than some of the other ones. I know at one point I had been getting some at Lowe's because I couldn't find it anymore at Walmart a couple years ago, but that one did turn out to be a little bit darker than the one from Walmart. That's still my favorite. So the bottom comment from that video is one word, terrible. So I'm not even sure what to say to that besides just sorry you felt that way. And I guess, um, you know, maybe antique mall videos aren't everyone's thing, which is fine. Maybe just not watch if you don't like that sort of thing. As always, thanks so much for hanging out with me. I think it's lunchtime. I just got a text from Ephraim. He made grilled cheese sandwiches for us, so I'll go in and eat. And I hope you all are having a great day and enjoying the spring season we're in. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.